it can be tricky trying to combine pickups from different manufacturers. The reason is because there's no standardization in the industry in terms of how coils are wound. This is a Strat pickup bobbin. You can see it's just six magnets with a piece of flat four bond on the top and the bottom. It would normally have a piece of wire wrapped around it in a coil. The wire would terminate at these two eyelets and that would be a complete pickup. There's not much to it. The problem is that the coil of wire can be wound around this bobbin clockwise or counterclockwise. And of course the magnets can be magnetized so that the top is the north end of the magnet or the south end of the magnet. So you have four possibilities with a single coil and there's no standardization in the industry. Then you combine that in the case of humbuckers if you start using four conductor wire with uh, four different colors of wire. Often it's black, white, red, green, but sometimes it's other colors. There's no standardization in the industry in terms of uh, which wires go to which parts of the coils. So sometimes you have to do a quick bit of investigation to get the pickups connected properly so that they all work properly together. We're installing this Duncan pickup in a guitar that already has a couple of Fender pickups in it. The Duncan pickup needs to play nice with the Fender pickups, meaning it needs to be in phase with them. If it's wired so that it's out of phase, then the two position, where these two are both on, will sound thin and weak. Either pickup by itself would sound fine, but the combined position won't. The question we're faced with is whether to follow Duncan's standard color code when we connect the bridge pickup. That depends on whether wiring it that way will connect it in phase with the others, or if it'll be out of phase, which we don't want. If we determine that it will be out of phase with the fender pickups, then we're going to have to adjust the color coding. So how do we tell whether they'll be in phase or out of phase with each other before we solder the Duncan's connections? It's easy if we have a meter. We'll use the meter to observe a particular behavior, uh, which we'll talk about in a minute, and we want that behavior to be the same for both the fender pickups and for the Duncan pickup. And if they're the same, they'll be in phase. But if it's different, then they'll be out of phase and we'll have to adjust the color coding. Since the fender pickups are already connected to the circuit, we'll do them first. It's a pretty safe bet that the neck and middle on this guitar are in phase with each other, but we can test both just to make absolutely sure. Because the fender pickups are already connected to the circuit, we can just insert a guitar cable into the jack and then we can put our meter leads on the other end of the cable. I could just put the meter leads on the plug like this with red to the tip and black to the ring. Now, this will work fine, it's just a little awkward because it ties up one of your hands uh, since you need to hold both leads in place. You can use your other hand to do the rest of the test but I have a jack here with leads attached that will make this a little easier because it will free up my hands, so I'm going to use that. I plug the end of the guitar cable into the jack and then I clip the little alligator clips to the meter leads. You can't really see this, but the red lead is connected to the plug's tip and the black lead is connected to the ring. So here I've clipped the alligator clips onto the meter leads and I put the meter on the resistance scale, or ohms. This meter is auto-ranging, so it only has the, the one ohms setting. Uh, but your meter might be the same, or it might have multiple resistance scales. And if it does, then you'll use the 20K setting. Now, if I put the pickup selector in the neck position, I'll read the DC resistance of the neck pickup, as you can see here. If I switch it to the middle, I'm now reading the middle pickup. You can see that the reading is stable, but if I take a ferrous object, meaning one that contains iron, like this hex wrench, and I move it above the pickup, you can see that the meter reading jumps around. The reason is that even though you can't see it, there's a magnetic field surrounding the pickup. This field latches onto anything with iron in it, and so when I move the ferrous object, the magnetic field is latching onto this and physically moving 
to some extent. This movement of the field relative to the coil of wire, which is stationary, induces current in the coil, which is what creates the pickup's output. But it also upsets the meter reading, as you can see. Once we stop moving the ferrous object, the reading stabilizes, since again the meter is simply reading the resistance of a coil of wire. So whatever it read before the interruption, it will return to that same reading. And this is the particular behavior that I alluded to earlier. Our goal is to place a ferrous object against the pickup and hold it steady so that the reading stabilizes. And then we'll pull it gently away from the pickup and the reading on the meter is going to do one of two things. It will either jump up momentarily and then stabilize back to where it was. Or it will drop momentarily and then stabilize back to where it was. We don't care which it does. We just want all of the pickups to do the same thing. If they all do the same thing, then they'll be in phase with each other. On this fender neck pickup, we're reading 7.37K ohms. I'll put the screwdriver against the pickup and hold it still to let the meter reading stabilize, and then I'll pull it gently away. A ferrous object is going to be magnetically attracted to the pickup, so it might be helpful to use your finger as a fulcrum here to sort of roll the screwdriver away gently like this. So I've held it against the pickup, the reading stabilized, and I'll pull it away now. Now I'm going to put it back in contact with the pickup again, let it stabilize, and I'll pull it away now. You can see that when I pull it away, the reading raises and then returns to where it was. I'll do the same thing with each pickup. You have to be careful about the polarity of the meter leads here because watch what happens if I reverse the meter connections by flipping the red and black leads. The meter reads the same, so I'll put the hex driver back on the pickup and let it stabilize and I'll pull it away now. Then I'll put it back in contact with the pickup again and pull it away now. See what happened? Now the reading drops before settling back exactly the opposite of what it was doing before. So you have to make sure that you're connecting the meter to each pickup in a consistent way. If you get in the habit of assuming red is hot and black is ground, then connect red to the tip and black to the ring. Or if you're connecting the meter directly to a pickup, as we're about to do with this Duncan pickup. Then you'll connect red to the pickup's hot wire and black to the ground wire. Duncan's humbucker color coding is black is hot, green is ground, and the red and white wires connect together unless you intend to split the pickup or connect its coils in parallel or some other atypical wiring. So that connection is just covered with heat shrink or tape and it won't connect to anything else. So green is our ground and black is our hot wire. Whatever your connections end up being, the bare wire is always, always, always connected to ground. So a safe bed is generally the back of a pot. But we won't worry about this wire for our test. We'll connect the meter leads to what we assume will be the hot and ground wires. So the red meter lead goes to hot, which is black, and the black meter lead goes to ground, which is the green wire. I could just hold the meter leads against the wires like this, but it's awkward. And plus I'll be reading the resistance of my body. It's better to use clips like these if you have them, but you can use anything that works to connect the leads to the pickup wires. You can use uh, paper clips, bobby pins, you could even use tape if you have to. With these wires, I'm just going to clip red to red, black to black, and now I can connect these to the pickup wires. Black is hot, green is ground, and now I can just let go and I have use of my hands again. So now we just perform the test like we did on the fender pickups and we want it to give us the same results, which was to raise the reading before it settles back. 
So I'll touch the screwdriver to the top of the pickup and let it stabilize and I'll pull it away now. I'll do it a second time, let it stabilize and pull it away now. As you can see the behavior is the opposite of what we had before. The Duncan pickup drops where the fender pickups raised. So if we wire the Duncan per Duncan's suggested color code, then the Duncan is going to be out of phase with the fender pickups and the two position where we're combining the bridge and middle will sound thin and weak. So all we have to do here is reverse the hot and ground of the Duncan pickup so green becomes hot and black becomes ground. So let's give that a try. I'll just reverse these black and red connections. Red goes to the green wire, which now will be our hot wire, and black goes to the black wire, which now will be our ground wire. And then we'll try our screwdriver trick and see what happens. I'll put the screwdriver on the pole piece, let it stabilize, pull it away now. I'm going to try it one more time, put it on the pole piece, let it stabilize, pull it away now. And there you go, the Duncan pickup is now giving us the same meter behavior as the fender pickups. All we need to do is connect the Duncan pickup using green as hot and black as ground and everything will work perfectly. The bare wire, as stated before, will still go to ground. And that's it, it only takes a minute or so to do this once you know how and it will potentially save you a bunch of time and hassle when you combine pickups from different manufacturers. Well thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you'll always know when we release new videos. Also, come visit us next time you're looking for that perfect part to sweeten your tone at www.toneshapers.com. The link is in the description below. See you next time.